Hi, my name's Ian and welcome back to this Peugeot Boxer Camper Van build. This is episode 15. In this episode, I'm going to be fitting some solar panels. Now, part of the fitments I've already done, uh, which was done the other day when the weather was really nice, and I apologise for the the shortness of the footage of that is just that it was rather a hot day and I wanted to just get on with the job and make sure that I could get it all fitted uh, while the sealants uh, were still workable. Um, so, But there is some footage of that which I'll show in part of this video. But the main part of the video today is to actually show the installation of the wiring part of uh, the, the solar panels. So I've got the solar controller and I've also got an interface I'm going to be fitting as well. Uh, so uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, I'll sort of show you the footage of what I've already done uh, with regards to fitting the solar panels up on the roof um, and then we'll then jump into uh, sort of showing you where I'm going to be putting the solar controller and also the interface as well. So I'll come back to you in a bit. Right, the first job we're going to do is give the roof a clean because it's absolutely filthy. Now the eagle eyed of you may notice something a little bit different about my roof compared to everybody else's roofs on a Ducato or a Peugeot Boxer or a Citroen Relay. And the fact that if you look here the roof is ribbed. If you look down there the roof is no longer ribbed anymore. And the reason for that is because I had a problem with water ponding behind my um, the, the skylight at the front where water was actually getting in so I've actually now leveled up and also I've used roof uh, roofless flush band around all of the openings for the skylights to stop that problem ever happening again. So uh, basically this roof will never leak. Right, so I've to clean the roof now. I've now got them marked out where I'll put them. I'll put some masking tape down so I know exactly where the sealant's going to go. I'm also going to probably mechanically fix at the front edge uh, and also along the back edge as well just to make sure they never come off. But uh, yeah, we'll see about that one in a minute. Right, that's the solar panels now fitted. I to decide to screw them down in the end. And it's been quite a hot day today, so I've just cracked on with it and uh, got them fitted. Got the gland over there now, it's just been held down with a bit of tape just while the sealant dries. Then I can just tidy up the cable in tomorrow and then uh, work inside and get the rest of it sorted. Right, just casting a bit of light there for you. I hope it's not too bright. I've, this is where I've brought the, uh, the wiring through the roof. Uh, from above. I'm going to fit a grommet up in there in a minute just to cut that hole off down there. But basically this wiring is going to come down through this cupboard um, and then I'm then going to be fitting the the controller, uh, the, the, the um, MPTT controller here in this part of the cupboard and then I then need to remove some of this um, this timber out here and I'm then going to run wiring from under the, uh, from there Underneath the shower, there's a big gap that runs all the way down through there. And I've got caught around the cables. It's going to run down through under here. Uh, it's going to go through and under this cupboard, and then it's going to come across here, along there, uh, along the floor here, um, and then we're going to then run down the side, uh, just down there. I'll take that plastic trim out there and then run round to the battery and then I'm also going to run some cabling up the side of here up to the top there I'm going to take out this um, smoke alarm and that's when I'm going to fix the interface for the solar controller itself For running any wiring on a Peugeot Boxer, Citroen Relay or a Fiat Giacato, if you take out the left hand footstep it gains you access to all the wiring which then takes you across then into the battery itself which is the uh, best way of routing your wiring, that's the way I've uh, done most of mine so far and that's where I'm going to do this one. Right, after much jiggery pokery i managed to get the cables through to where I want to get them to now uh, for fitting to the, to the, uh, the controller itself. So. Uh, yeah, that's at that end, and then uh, down here I had to go down underneath the cupboard there, underneath through that lot, then in the corner, I then had to pull the corner section out to get to the wires there, and then ran them all underneath there and out the other side. This is the lead for the, uh, for the interface, which, uh, which is just there, that's the interface for it, as I said, of which we're going to take the, uh, take the smoke alarm out, I'm going to put the interface there. Bit later on, um, and then so the cables then come through from underneath there, under here, they go underneath there, down along under here, and then across to the battery. Still got to fit the fuse uh, for the solar controller at that end, 
and just now starting off uh, sorting out the other end for the leisure battery. Right, so that's the uh, leisure battery end of it now wired up. Anything left to do in there is to put the fuse into the fuse holder once we've got everything else connected up. So uh, next job now is to then wire up the solar controller. The basic setup of what we've got here is looking from the left hand side, so the red cable coming in from the left, that is the positive from battery one or the vehicle battery. The next one is the negative from battery one or the vehicle battery the middle one the middle red one is the positive coming from the solar panel the black one is the negative coming from the solar panel the next red one is the positive coming from the leisure battery and the next black one is the negative coming from the battery the leisure battery should I say the gray cable is the cable for the interface and the order of which you do these is you um, the black cable from the leisure battery, sorry, from vehicle the, the, from the first battery, gets fitted first. You then install the red uh, cable from the first battery and install that second, and then install the fuse. It will then start flashing to indicate that that battery is connected. You do exactly then the same with the second battery. So again, fitting the negative cable first, then the red positive cable, install the fuse and then, then that'll start flashing. After that, you then install the black cable for the solar panel, and then follow that with the red cable from the solar panel. Now with the, the solar panel itself, I've got two solar panels. So there was a red wire coming off of each one, uh, and a black wire coming off of each one. Now each one of those then came with a Y connector. So the two uh, red cables were connected to one Y connector, and the two black connect uh, cables were then connected to the other Y connector. So that then made one red cable, one black cable, and then that came down through the, the hole in the roof and then down to the MPT, MPTT controller, should I say. This is a crude diagram of my setup that I've got now fitted to the van. So we've got a solar panel there, another solar panel there. The two positives are connected up to a Y connector, which then come to the MPTT controller. The two negatives are joined together, which also then joins to the MPTT controller. We then have the plus going to the ledger battery, the minus going to the ledger battery, the plus going to the vehicle battery, and the negative going to the vehicle battery through the MPTT controller. As I said, I've also got a separate interface, but I've not put that in there just for clarity. And there we have it, so wired in now. Um, the only thing we just need to do now is fit the um, interface controller which I've just got down on the floor down here which is just on a test mode at the moment to make sure it's working okay but uh, as you can see there we have 23 volts going in at the moment it's a very very dull day so uh, obviously that uh, will make a difference on it sorry I'll just uh, the head torch on there and it's uh, not showing the light too well there you go yeah that's it 23 volts is what's going on at the moment so at least that's i know that's working now so i can now get that fitted into the communication center above the door there we are now that's the uh, controller or should i say the interface now fitted and just showing 23 volts going in and both batteries are showing as being as charging just uh, moving on that you can see the bars going up at the moment so that means we're working as I said, a very, very dull day today. I mean, compared to yesterday, it was 23 degrees there yesterday. Uh, absolutely baking hot. And today, I think it's no more than about 9 or 10. It's an uh, absolute real change in the weather. And as I said, if we are on very, very cloudy conditions as well. So, uh, yeah, quite happy that we've got some voltage going in. Uh, it be very interesting to see what happens when the sun comes back out again, which uh, is not likely to happen over the next few days, looking at the weather forecast. Anyway, right, let's start getting cleaned up now. Just uh, while I've been tidying up here, I've just sort of stuck my head down here and noticed that this uh, solar controller, the light on the right hand side there is flashing. So I've just checked the instructions for it and that actually tells me that the leisure battery is now fully charged. So when the solid light on the left hand side start, starts flashing, that'll mean then the vehicle battery is fully charged. And if we go over to now to the, uh, the interface, you'll see it uh, only lights up in a minute. That's, oh, hang on, it's not really showing it too well. You might be just better, oh, okay, that's it now. You'll see on the right hand side there now, which is the leisure battery, is fully charged, 
battery one, sorry, the vehicle battery one is obviously still charging. Uh, we've got a little bit more light coming in now, we've got 23.3 volts coming into the system now. So, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, another 10 15 minutes we'll be fully charged on both sides. Just been pulling a bit of power off the leisure battery for about the last half an hour or so. I had some lights running and just had the fridge running and that just to try and pull some power back down off it just to make sure that the solar power controller then kicks back in again. On the interface it's obviously showing there that we've still got 23.3 volts coming in. That's a very dull day today but obviously both batteries are now charging. And if I then go down to the actual solar panel controller there we'll see now that we've got two uh, green lights uh, constantly showing there. When it's fully charged it then flashes on and off. On the interface you've got different modes on there so at the moment we're showing 23.4 volts coming into the system itself off the solar panels. If I then press the next button on there you'll see then that battery one which is the vehicle battery has got 14 point that's a, charged up to 14.9 in fact it's got up to 15 volts on that one. Press it again and it's then telling me my leisure battery is at 14.2 volts. So that's the installation of my solar panels now complete. Uh, obviously different solar panel controllers will have different ways of working. Obviously I just followed the instructions that came with the one that I've got and it all seems to be working very fine at the moment. So uh, yeah, keep an eye over, on it over the next few days or so and uh, just uh, see what happens and just make sure it's uh, continues to uh, carry on working the way that it is at the moment. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a tick and also subscribe if you haven't already. Right, we'll see you again in the next one. Cheers, thanks a lot.